this video familiarizes you with the different sections of GSTR-1 in which data has to be furnished. As stated in GSTR-1 return overview video, the sections can be broadly grouped into two categories. In one category, invoice level details have to be furnished, whereas in the other category, summary level information has to be furnished. The first group has five tiles. The first tile summarizes the invoice details furnished in respect of B2B supplies to registered persons. B2B or business to business invoices are issued against supplies made from one registered person to another registered person. The invoice level data of all B2B supplies made in the given tax period needs to be uploaded in GSTR-1 for successful filing of tax return. As explained in the GSTR-1 overview video, log in to the GST portal and navigate to the GSTR-1 dashboard by selecting the current tax period. Click the B2B invoices block. If you have already uploaded invoice details, you will see a screen displaying the receiver voice summary as shown. Clicking the link underlying each receiver GSTIN will take you to a screen in which already furnished invoice details are visible. If you want to add more invoices for the same receiver, you can do so by clicking the Add Invoice button here. To add invoices issued to other receivers, go back to the previous screen and click the Add Invoice button like before. On the Add Invoice page that opens, enter the GSTIN or UIN of the receiver taxpayer and move to the next field either by using Tab key on your keyboard or by clicking into the next field with your mouse. Notice that the receiver name, the default place of supply and the default supply type fields get auto-populated. The supply type field gets populated based on your place of supply. If the place of supply is not the same as that of the receiver's place of business, you can change it from the POS drop-down list and the supply type will be displayed accordingly. In case of deemed export invoices or invoices for supplies made to SEZ, please check the relevant boxes as applicable. The invoice number should be unique for every GSTIN for each financial year of maximum length 16 characters and alphanumeric with allowable special characters of slash and dash. After that, enter the date of invoice. Please note that the invoice date cannot be a future date or a date prior to the date of registering with GST. Next, enter the total value of the invoice. Select the Supply Attract Reverse Charge checkbox if applicable. Reverse charge is applicable in case you are supplying goods or services that have been notified by the government under the reverse charge mechanism. Select the Is Commerce checkbox if the supply was made through an e-commerce portal. Scroll down to enter the taxable value of invoiced items as per the applicable rate of taxes. The rate here denotes the integrated tax rate or combined tax rate of central tax plus a state or union territory tax. On entering the taxable values, system will automatically update the central tax and state or union territory tax fields calculated on the basis of rate and taxable value. Enter the CES value if applicable. If the tax amounts collected in the invoice are different from the calculated values, you should edit the calculated values then. After entering the invoice details, click Save to save the invoice data. Notice the confirmation message and your invoice details under the Uploaded by Taxpayer tab. You may keep adding more invoices by clicking the Add Invoice button in similar manner. If you want to add invoices of a particular receiver, you can use the Add Invoice button available on the receiver's screen as explained earlier. In that case, the receiver's GSTIN, name, default place of supply and default type of supply fields would be pre-populated. The Uploaded by Taxpayer tab shows all the invoices that you have uploaded for a given tax period. Similarly, 
Uploaded by receiver tab displays the invoices that you missed from your GSTR1 but were detected and uploaded by the receiver taxpayer. If the receiver taxpayer has modified any invoice that you uploaded in your GSTR1, it will show up under the modified by receiver tab. And finally, the rejected by receiver tab displays invoices from your GSTR1 that were rejected by the receiver taxpayer. By default, the invoices appear as pending once they are saved and while the system is validating the data. If there are no validation errors, the invoices so as processed and they flow to GSTR 2A and GSTR 2 of the respective receiver taxpayer. Once done, click the back button to return to your GSTR 1 dashboard and add details of supplies to consumers. Similarly, you can enter the invoice details in the B2C large invoices section of all interstate supplies made to unregistered persons where the invoice value is greater than 2,50,000 rupees. Click this tile and click the add invoice button. Please note that this type of invoice does not require the recipient's GSTIN. Just ensure that the value of each invoice that you enter in this category is greater than Rs. 2,50,000. Otherwise, the system will not accept the invoice and will show an error message. For entering credit and debit notes, you will need to furnish the details of the original invoice against which this instrument was issued. For export invoices, you will need to furnish the invoice number and additional details such as the port code and whether the GST payment is to be made or not. The shipping bill number or bill of export number is not a mandatory field, but if the same is available at the time of filing GSTR1, the same should be provided. Let's scroll down and move to the next section, GSTR1 Other Details. In the B2C Others category, you can enter the summary details of B2C interstate invoices with value of less than or equal to 2,50,000 rupees for each invoice and issued to unregistered persons. Additionally, this category also includes B2C invoices that were raised against all intrastate supplies irrespective of the invoice amount. However, this category requires summary level information to be furnished such as details as per place of supply and tax rates have to be entered which includes supplies made via e-commerce portals as well. GST has provisions for declaring meal rated, non-GST and other exempt supplies. Meal rated are those supplies for which the tax rate has been notified as nil. Non-GST are those supplies on which the tax is not levied under the GST Act such as for supply of wine, beer, land etc. Whereas other exempt supplies are those supplies which have been exempted through a notification under the GST law. While all these supplies carry a zero rate of tax, all these supplies must be captured separately in GSTR1. Click the Neal Rated Supplies block to open its field as shown. The categories shown here are interstate supplies to registered person, interstate supplies to consumer, intrastate supplies to registered person and intrastate supplies to consumer. For these categories, you can specify the value of supplies that were either nil rated, exempted excluding nil rated and non-taxable or categorized as non-GST supplies. Click edit to unfreeze the fields and to begin entering the data. Enter the required data. Once done, click save and the fields will be frozen again. Click the back button to return to the GSTR1 dashboard. Before concluding this course, I want to show brief about two more categories. These are HSN or SAC summary of outward supplies and the section that captures the list of documents issued. The HSN or SACY summary of outward supplies needs to be reported if the annual turnover exceeds 1.5 crore rupees. Providing this summary with annual turnover of less than 1.5 crore rupees is optional, but the taxpayer still needs to provide information about the description of goods.
If the annual turnover in the preceding year was between 1.5 crore and 5 crore rupees, the taxpayer needs to report HSN codes at two digits level. For annual turnover exceeding 5 crore rupees, the HSN codes must be reported at four digits level. Next, the Documents Issued section has 12 subsections in which you need to declare the invoice series and provide details of multiple series as applicable. After you have added invoices for sections relevant to your business, in the bottom section of the page, you will find an option to submit your return for auto-validation of details, a checkbox for signing declaration and the buttons to facilitate the e-filing steps. Once you have entered all the required details, simply go ahead and file the return, either by using DSC, EVC or e-sign options. Thank you.